Hey everybody, welcome. So, um, I thought it was about time that I did a little review on the old Sigma 150 to 600 contemporary lens. I've had it now for about just over six months or so. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you about that six months. I'm gonna show you images from what I've taken then, maybe a bit of footage as well, uh, and tell you and show you the settings that I use. So, check it out. Alrighty then. So, firstly, let's get into why I got this rather than an L series um, Canon lens or, or something equivalent. In all honesty, it's the price, right? So I'm going to go straight into the price straight away. That I got from a reputable dealer in the UK, and it was under a thousand pounds. Good money, right? When you're thinking about a 600 millimeter um, L Canon L lens, over 10 grand, right? So yeah, I know quality and all that kind of stuff, but. In this video, I'm going to tell you whether or not this comes up quality-wise, pictures are sharp, and whether or not saving a bit more money was worth it, and it will be in my opinion. Right, so let's jump straight into it then. You know what the price was, okay, in comparison to the, the more expensive lenses. Why Tele Super Zoom? Well, I, could, I suppose I could have gone fixed lens, Sigma do do them. Um, but I wanted uh, something that was a little bit more, shall we say, useful. Let's use that word, useful, yeah? Um, uh, and I could use it for a variety of different things with regards to shooting wildlife and all that. I've also done some sports things with it, and I might just touch on that a little bit later on. All right, so overall build quality then. Let's start with that. Um, it's really good. Absolutely superb. Now it is the contemporary version, so it is of the plastic type, okay. Um, the, the, the sport version, which is a couple of hundred quid more, it is metal construction and slightly heavier. The weight of this one is just under two kilograms. Now that's not you know, it's a it's a fair it's a fair whack, isn't it? Um it's a fair bit of weight to it, you know. You know, you've got hold of it, but for me, having something heavy means it's not wafting about. You know, you position it, lock in, position it, lock in, and that's what I like about it that way. Okay, let's get that out of the way. And first things first, then I'm going to go into really sort of the kind of only gripe really that I've had with it. Now, when they come, they come with a shorter shoe, which is that big there. Okay, now for a lens this big, I didn't think that was enough. So I don't know if you can see, I've got an extender on it, extender plate. Uh, and then there's a guy on Etsy, I believe, I think he's got a website as well, um, and he sells these. And this, was a game changer. You know, you can hold it. It's more flexible when it goes onto a gimbal. You can move it backwards or forwards a lot more, giving it and enabling you to balance it. So Sigma, the only gripe really, you know, with the lens foot, make it bigger. Why not? Yeah, we're, we're paying good money for it. So why not make it bigger? All right, so that was really my only sort of big gripe with it thus far. Okay, um, let's start with the features then. So going off the top, right on the top here, um, is a, a distance meter, yeah? Um, you set the focus ring to a certain distance by turning the focus ring, like 10 meters, it's also in feet as well. It should be focused at that particular distance. For me, 
It's something I've I've never used it. I, I to this day I don't think I've ever used it. You know, I just point the camera, autofocus or manual focus using the tripod or whatever, and I'm I get it in focusing camera. So, guys, comments please. You know, if there's a way that I you think I could benefit from using that up there. Okay. Now onto the settings that I actually use on it. So if we're starting with the top then, and I'll put my glasses on for this. Underneath the focus ring, it's, you've got a switch that says focus and it goes MF, MO, AF, right? Manual focus, manual assist or, or manual override, all right? And auto focus. So manual, look, I'm not gonna think you're stupid. Manual focus is a manual focus ring, okay? Enables you to focus the, the lens manually, yeah? Focus it manually. Manual override means it will still auto focus for you. But, you know, if you want to adjust it a tiny bit on a subject, you know, you're not quite happy with the autofocus or for whatever reason, it enables you to um, override that. That is the one that I pretty much use all the time, especially with uh, static birds, anything like that. I I use the, the manual override. So if I'm not happy, quite happy with it, and I don't, yeah, I've never not used it a lot, but you can just reach in, slight little tweak, you know, if you want to change the focus spot from end of the beak to the eye, or, you know, if, if it's, it's not quite on the eye where you want it, you can tweak it. I've done that once or twice. And uh, the standard autofocus, so I use back button focus. You push the back button, it autofocuses. It's as simple as that, okay? That's what that one's for. Let's go down to the next one. And you'll see there's another switch that says full, 10 meters to infinity. That's the sideways eight. 2.8 meters to 10 meters. Now what this is for, it keeps it within that focal range with that distance, okay? So put it on 2.8 to 10 meters, it will focus anywhere between 2.8 meters away to 10 meters away, okay? 10 meters to infinity. So it won't focus on anything really, really close. So if you know, you're struggling to focus on something, you won't accidentally on focus on something five meters to you. You know, if your subject is 15 meters away, it will get more chance of getting that subject 15 meters to you, it won't focus any closer. And then full. Um, for me, um, the settings I use, I pretty much have it on full pretty much most of the time because I kind of forget it's there. Um, but I have in the past uh, 10 meters to infinity, you know, when I'm setting bird heights, that kind of thing. All right. Um, so those are the settings I use. It. It's quite, have a little play with it, see what sort of suits your style of photography. Um, I've had no problems using full, but or 10 to infinity, that's quite a good one because you're sat in a hide, so you're not going to have anything come really, really super close to you. You know, and to infinity, well, how, how far you want to go, all right? There's one underneath there, all right? So we've got the optical stabilizer, all right? And on there, we've got the off one and two, okay? So, I pretty much have it on one all of the time, pretty much most of the time. What Sigma say is that one is just general use, really sort of standard kind of thing. And I'm on a tripod pretty much all the time. So when I'm on the tripod, the optical stabilizer is off anyway. Now, I have tried playing with two and it says, for two is, is anything in motion, so vertical stabilization, so tracking subjects, that kind of thing. I, to be honest, I can't see too much difference with it. It 
does do, maybe I've not used it enough. Maybe I've not photographed enough um, birds in flight, that kind of thing, to maybe analyze what's going on. But for me, if I'm handheld, I'm on one, and I've shot sports photography with it as well. And to be nice with you, I'm getting sharp pictures. So it, it does work. But tripod, I'm using no stabilization at all because I've got the old gimbal on a big tripod. It, yeah, it doesn't need it, it ain't going anywhere, right? Okay, moving swiftly on. Let's go down to the next switch. Okay, which is one I don't use. So that is um, custom settings, C1 and C2. This is where I might ask you guys for some comments below. Um, generally, I, I didn't buy the dock that goes with it, all right? And they're not super expensive. Um, I didn't use a dock to go with it, but what you can do, you can go into the dock and you can set settings for, for certain types of photography, C1, one type set the, the lens up a certain way c2 set the lens up a certain way and the lens will perform on those custom settings much like c1 and c2 on a canon 90d here um uh you can set you know sort of certain sets you know go on c1 it's set for i don't know static birds go on c2 it's set for birds in flight so it changes the shutter speed and the aperture accordingly a similar thing with c1 c2 on sigma all right let's just change this around because this is not how i use it that's that's generally how i have it set up that way around better or oh, there was something a bit weird about it okay so that's the settings i've been using on the lens itself there's another button on the side here and that is lens that's lens lock okay so what that will do that will lock the lens so i go all the way up to 600 flip the switch lens doesn't move i for me i actually use it you know if i'm going in i know everything's long range i just put it on 600 and then i know i'm not going to accidentally pull it in yeah you can set it for say 400 you've got to make sure that you've got it spot on though as it won't lock and i'm not going to stand up to make sure you gotta make sure it's all aligned properly there you go now, let's do it. There you go, so now it's locked on 400 millimeters. Okay, and it won't accidentally move. Now, you're thinking, oh, does it suffer from lens creep? No, I've never had a problem with lens creep with it at all. And I have it on a sling, hanging off the shoe, um, using a, a Acro Swiss uh, mount onto a sling, and it just hangs beside me, and, and it's never crept at all so is that a feature worth having i don't know i've used it you know to lock it into into place once or twice once i'm not, I'm not setting a hide um is it a, a a piece of functionality that's essential no not really okay so it does come with a lens hood as well it's a nice big one easy on off all right I always generally I have the hood on regardless of what I'm shooting I have it on all the time okay uh, generally those of you who don't know about um, big lenses they come with a lens collar which enables you to turn the whole thing around so if you want to shoot vertically portrait style you know normally you would tip the camera or have an L bracket on there with a big telephoto lens for those of you who didn't know you just turn that knob down there and it locks into place behind the neoprene here there are levels so across there there are two marks that line up to two that is perfectly level turn it the other way it tells you it's 90 degrees turn it the other way around it also turns it at 90 degrees personally i'm not going to faff around with that i've always done it 
handheld, you, do, you use your eye, and on a tripod you use your eye. On the 90D there is a little, you know, you go into info on the back screen there. There's also uh, uh, a steadier as well, but you know, just make sure you set your 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 tripod up as straight as it is with a bubble, um, or put a bubble on the hot shoe there. Just make sure everything's nice and level when you're shooting, and you shouldn't go far wrong. But that's what that's for there. Okay. Now, before I tell you whether or not what well, total waste of money or way. Let's look at a few pictures that I've shot with it over the last six months. It comes on to the thing that this is a 150 to 600 millimeter lens um, it's on APC sensor camera so 1.6 crop factor okay uh, number on screen there tells you what it takes it up to as well I've seen some people don't like that they like to put these on full frame cameras but the R series well you do the math you know bodies alone are two and a half three thousand four thousand and and above I'm like really come on I'm hobbyist I'm not going to go that bananas with a camera not just yet anyway so numbers on screen there tells you it takes it up from 600 to the equivalent 1.6 uh, magnification on top of that okie koki then Let's get to the nuts and bolts of it. Would I do it all again? It's hefty price tag, right? You know, compare that with a 90D as well. Yeah, uh, for me, it's a no brainer. It's a good lens. It's very good for wildlife and nature photography. Someone has also recently said, keep it on 150 millimeters and you can do some macro stuff with it. So that's what I was going to do today, but it's hammering down. Oh, what a summer we're having, but it's hammering down and I wasn't going to be playing about with trying to get butterflies and things in the rain and flowers and all that. So I thought I'd do this little review that was scheduled in my diary. Um, yeah, plenty worth it. Oh my God. And really, I am not sponsored by Sigma and this is not an endorsement. I would recommend this lens. And to be honest, if you want the extra security and you've got a little bit more money, get the sport version because it's weather sealed. All right. There is like a um, sort of ceiling around. They say they're sealing around it. And there's a little rubber disc thing that you can put in there as well, which I haven't got because I've got the neoprene on. Um, but again, that gives some but sort of foot bit of protection. But I use a rain cover, and you can see it's covered in neoprene. I'll use a rain and a dust cover when it's raining or any dusty scenarios just to look after the lens. And I got a waterproof lens cover for it as well. Okay, so there you have it, guys. That's my sort of six monthly roundup of the Sigma 150. 50 to 600 millimeter contemporary lens okay and i said uh it's it's worth that all right so guys please continue to subscribe and like i do promise there is some outside stuff coming very very soon um and don't forget to like share hit the dingly bell if you want to see more thank you so much Bye bye